was glad to see you had this aspect today because yesterday afternoon I was going through the, the five essentials and <clears throat> those realizations, a lot of them struck me as, um, yeah, but, yeah, but. So here's the but. So. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> That makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the breath. Yeah, Jesus probably felt better after he came out of the tomb too. <laughs> yeah. Any other reactions? Any other thoughts? I guess um, a, a lot of it. It's is trust and it's so hard to trust that um, you know to give yourself over to what God's plans are because we only see this side and the small picture so um, building trust I think is one of the biggest jobs we have here probably one of the hardest ones I agree yeah I think in general, the five, the, I, I don't remember what you called those five um, points that you brought up yesterday and then you're talking about today, but the whole thing is very counterculture to today. Um, so it's almost retraining your brain um, to think that way compared to all of the messages that are sent out, um, you know, whether it's on TV or radio or books or whatever. Um, so it, it, it's a difficult message to um, get through. I mean, to get through my own brain, to get through other people's brains, you know, and everybody will have to come to that on their own. Um, but it's, it's just very counterculture. Mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be <laughs> yeah and that's the cycle right the cycle that we're drawing that it is countercultural it is a growth in trust and that's that breaking because to trust we have to let go we have to we have to uncling to what we're clinging to that need for security right mm -hmm that breaking apart process and that feels like a death sometimes mm -hmm. and sometimes it's a really well many times it's a very lonely process because it is so countercultural that nobody else really gets it mm -hmm. you know, this cycle it gets repeat oh go ahead no i i just said i agree yeah. It gets repeated over and over and over again. As a church, we celebrate it once a year for a reason. We need to be reminded that this, that we need to be reminded of this, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, this is too much. Mm -hmm. tough, it, can, it can be tough stuff, but it can be beautiful stuff, yeah. So I'm going to invite us into some re personal reflection time. I'm going to put the, I'm going to share my screen again. And I have put up there some questions for you. Um, we're going to take about 20 minutes, 15 minutes, let's take 15 minutes. In what ways, and I'll put the messages back up on the screen for you, but in what way are these life giving messages being lived out for you? In what way are you living them out? What are their challenges for you? What are the invitations for you? And what new life are you being called into as this newly resurrected being? And so it is 11, it's 1040, and let, I'll call us back at 1055. Um, does everybody have a sense of the questions? Is that... You know, you kind of know what I'm, I'm inviting you into. Okay, then I'm going to put these back up on the screen and I'll leave these on for you. Um, then it might be helpful to actually see them. And I'm going to play a little bit of music and I'll, I'll ring you back with the bell.
life is so
And Speedway, we're here for you with just what you need. We can't see you. We can't see you. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Looks like everybody's pretty ready. Are you ready? Would anybody like to share any of any other uh, insights that came up for you during that reflection time? Like Connie said, trust is so important. It's hard, but it's important. And then we have this need for renewal. We have to keep reminding ourselves of all these truths and live like <laughs> the you know, the biblical realization that you've just um, sent us it should give us confidence that we don't need to be ourselves important, but we're confident in God's love and, um, and care. What are some of the challenges? Trust. <laughs> what gets in the way of us of us doing these things? The clutter of life. Yeah, some everyday relationships just kind of draw you away. So you have to look for those moments that will draw you back. Things like this retreat, um, prayer, setting aside time for prayer, um, and just reading or um, finding resources that will strengthen you for this journey. Mm -hmm. I guess um, continued use of the sacraments too, 
especially right now when we are so far away from them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't help but feeling sorry for all the people who had gone through the rite of initiation who are not <laughs> going to be able to do anything tonight about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that must be a really difficult time for them. What are some of the invitations that you're feeling at this time? After all this reflection and tomb time and renewal time, what are some of the invitations that you're sensing for yourself? That's been really difficult now because reaching out to other people has been so hard. Um, having to be quarantined. But um, so I think I feel like we've been connecting in more frivolous ways, um, trying to make light of the situation right now. Uh, so even though it's been a time of additional prayer, uh, it's more communing with God than with people for me at, at least. Mm -hmm. Thank you for naming that, Connie, because I think that it, that says it really well that we all want each other to feel okay, you know, because it is a really hard time and tend to stay more on the surface because this kind of interaction is new and different and has its own challenges to it, right? Mm -hmm. So you named that really well, thank you. What helps us move beyond that? At this point, it's mostly prayer. Um, And again, I, I have a, such a different situation from other people because it's just myself and Steve. And so there's, you know, I don't have the distractions of the kids and the schoolwork and, or being at work for people who are working from home. Um, so it's, it's, I know, I just, I've spent more time in prayer probably, but, um, I think I usually do, at least Holy Week anyhow, seems to be more in depth. I've been working on meditation, find more of it. I think that will help. Now there's no excuse for I don't have time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is frivolous, but on a uh, side, side note, I. Um, I usually work out in the mornings, but I was also walking in the evenings and I found out I can do a full rosary in two miles while I'm walking. There you go. So um, that was just kind of an, um, an added bonus to walking and stress relief. And um, I think when you're praying the rosary, it's, it's like a meditation. Um, so yeah, it, it worked out perfectly, the little loop that I take, so. Yeah. I don't think that's frivolous at all. I've been doing walking rosaries for years. I, I never thought of it until this, and, uh, you know, maybe that's the blessing of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you going to, you want to share? I'm mm -hmm. mute. I'm muting. Sure. That Jenny can share. Hang on. Uh, I don't know how much um, I'm struggling with the invitation part of it, to be honest, that question kind of, I got kind of stuck on that. But m the main things that I was thinking about was everything's going to be okay. Like that's what those, those five counter, the five butts <laughs> was, you know, it's, it's going to be okay. You have to stick it out. You have to have faith. You have to maintain hope but 
no matter what you go through now, everything's going to be okay <laughs> in the end. And that's, that's mainly what I was kind of getting out of today's meditation, I guess. I'll go back on you. Yeah, our faith tells us that. I think sometimes for me, the struggle is I want to know how. I want to know what that's going to look like. You know, I want to have that picture. I want to know. And I think sometimes the holding and knowing and trusting, you know, knowing it's going to be fine because our faith assures us that's going to be fine. And we have evidence in our own lives um, of other times that we've gone through hard times that it turns out okay. I can look back and see giftedness and all of the really tough stuff I've been through. But I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> so that's the tension. You know, as at one point in our in our time together, I said there's always that tension. There's always that yin and yang. There's the death and there's the new life, and there's the give and the take. And I think that's the tension of this time that we're that I'm holding and I hear others holding that we want to cling and we want to know and we take assurance that, yeah, it is going to be okay in the end, but that anxiety about that unknown factor, you know, and to hold that or at least make time and space to hold that, I think is an important part of our faith process to allow God into that uneasiness. Allow Mary into that uneasiness, speaking of the rosary, because certainly she held that that same emotion, I think, mm -hmm. throughout her life. So we're blessed to have the tools um, to help us in those awkward spaces and to be able to reach out to others of faith. Um, I think reaching out and just saying, hey, I'm really having a hard day, <laughs> important as well, that we have this, the, the ability to say that to each other and hold that as sacred. So thank you. Thank you. Did anybody else watch the Archdiocese um, service yesterday afternoon? I, I thought Archbishop Listecki, um, his homily was very appropriate. Well, I mean, he was, he was drawing comparisons for those that didn't see it between um, the anxiety and loss and um, betrayal people feel now with what Jesus felt on the cross. Um, and he, he just articulated that I think probably everybody's feelings and projected them on to the meaning of the day and this season uh, very well. I, I thought it was very insightful. So too, you're what? I saw Connie nodding her head that she had seen it too. Yes, I did see it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was done very well. Thanks for bringing that up, Sandy. Yeah. We need I'm to it every day with Bishop Barron, Word on Fire, mm -hmm. the Daily Mass, and through the Easter. And he's great really enjoyed it and it's nice you can go anytime mm -hmm. you feel like watching it mm -hmm. yeah the gift of technology these days that enable us to connect in that way is a right. really good thing. yeah well perhaps it's time for us to move into our our creative time, our creative aspect, and finish our drawing. So with that, I am going to mute myself and hand the baton over to Jenny for us to take Finally found the direction. I'm unmuted. I don't know how to work this thing. Do I need to be bigger? Okay. I'm going to read the challenge, so you can help me. <laughs> Do you know how to text me? My bigger? You're bigger. Oh. I'm not for me. 
Oh, there we go. You know, I had to push a button. Okay, so I'm trying to tape this down flatter because I think that was part of the reason why it was hard to see. Hopefully, if you have a hard time seeing, let me know <laughs> what we're at here. Um, so the next part we have is the, the big, hopeful, beautiful flower on the side. Um, I feel like I need to share, we have to remind ourselves when we're doing flowers that um, they all look different. <laughs> and <laughs> because that's what the flowers are one of the things that I, I used to hate drawing um, because it never looked the way I wanted it to look. Um, but then if you actually stop and pay attention and you look around when you're walking or whatever, you start to realize that the that flowers vary quite a bit. So um, I'm just sharing that because I know that that would be my fear right now if I was on the other end of this. <laughs> um, so for the flower, I'm going to start with this petal here that looks like it's kind of, uh, it's the most complete looking petal here. And going down just two or three inches from our tomb, drawing, can you see that okay? Not really. Kind of, I mean, I'm trying to draw it dark. It's like a football with a smushed side on it, kind of or like an eyeball shape. Yeah, I'm trying to draw this dark for you. Is that, okay. Okay. So that's this petal right here. Then I'm gonna work on this one over here that's kind of a soft triangle. And we'll start right about where the bottom of this petal is over here. Draw almost a perfectly straight line. And then you pull it down into a triangle. It does not look like a flower, but it will. <laughs> I'm gonna erase some of my thing here. Okay. Next, I'm going to work on this one right up here. Am I going okay? All right. Okay, yeah. Right about halfway up your football, you make just kind of a light curve going straight up like that. And then you're going to bring it back down to about, uh, about halfway between where this meets and the top of your triangle here. Kind of narrow it out as you go up. Like that. Or what's supposed to meet. Yeah, the two lines should meet at the top of the petal here. So it should go right in there. Do you use that a lot? Does it really help? And then for this one here, this one looks more like a standard petal here, starting again about halfway, maybe just slightly under halfway up this line here. We're going to curve it out, pushing toward the corner here and curve it up and it'll meet at kind of a little bit of a point. <laughs> can you can you do that one over that one? I'm just drawing lines in the middle so that it looks a little bit more like petals for my own uh, mental health in this process. <laughs> so it looks more like a flower. But when we, when we go back and we add shading, it'll show a little bit more bending and depth as we get going. So 
I'm not going to lie. I'm having a little anxiety looking at it, not shaded. <laughs> and now this one down here is almost like a U, just a, a U shape starting, let's see, probably about half inch, three quarter inch down on this one and bring it down into a U. Now our last petal on the flower will be right in this gap here. And it's kind of a pointy little, kind of looks like a, a fang almost. <laughs> Drawing kind of a, now I'm going a little bit into my blue, that's okay if you have to do that. If you'd rather not do that, then you can adjust however you want it to adjust. But. So here's the kind of fang petal here. Yeah, I was just gonna when you're when you're done with the, your petals, if you want to give me a thumbs up. <laughs> can I eat by Barb? All right. Okay, so this right now looks really dorky and weird. We're going to fill in a little bit with some shading later and some, um, what are those called? The, the middle of the flower, the, the stamens, some stamens, so that it will look better, I promise. <laughs> but right now I'm going to draw the stem coming down. So actually, we're going to draw the stem coming up. So probably about an inch in from the bottom. Just draw a line almost straight to right about where the bottom of this, this petal meets, right here. And then the other side of it, so. And our leaf, You're gonna make kind of a backward C almost right here. Come up and then down. I'm not really sure how to describe that move, but it's kind of a backward C and a, like a wiggly line, almost like a roller coaster. Can you see that okay? I need to go darker. There, is that better? So that's this line right here that we just drew. And then coming up, another kind of wiggle to here. And then over here, more of a straight across one. It looks like a leaf. Yeah, it looks like a leaf. <laughs> There's good reason for that. So to finish it off, we just have this little line right here that we have to add like a really, um, not quite as curvy C backwards. There, it's turning into something. So this is that one here. We're gonna have another leaf that comes up this way and these leaves are gonna be much easier. No more funky journeys for these. It's just gonna be kind of a couple of straight lines that go off the page. All the challenging stuff is here. We don't have to draw it. <laughs> and then another leaf coming up this way. Continue it on this side of your triangle. Oh my God. And the part 
that connects to the flower is right here. Should really have discussed my flower anatomy before this, but that part right here just kind of filled in. When we get coloring, it's mostly going to be a lot of green that blends together. So if you don't get all these little shapes just right, that's okay. Is it hard to see on there? Um, the extra lines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, which one's the right in here? This one here, okay. I'll try to. It's getting a little awkward. <laughs> to draw. But we're almost through it. We're almost through the drawing part. Down here, we have a little bit of a leaf that comes up off the base of the stem. And again, that's just a couple of curvy lines like that. And then we have my favorite leaf, is the one that goes across the bottom here. Come up from the bottom here and around and just kind of make almost an S on the side. And then you're gonna do a reverse, come up like this and do kind of the reverse, like you're making a figure eight. I didn't make it as long on this picture because of the drip. <laughs> but, but if you want to bring it further in than I did, you can absolutely do that. So that's our drawing. You want to give me a thumbs up when you've hit this point. I'm not able to see any of the stuff that you're drawing. Oh, okay. Okay, she's got the thumbs up. No, it's okay. I should have looked at it too. It's got a thumbs up. Having the eraser, it's been a really good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Erasers are essential. This part. Yeah. Glad we didn't forget to mention erasers. <laughs> Are we all ready? Yeah, I can't talk about this. Barb, are you ready? Oh, no you don't, now you do. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna back this up just a little bit. So I can reach in again. <laughs> so back to the flower. Let's see if you can see. I chose to use a little kind of a purple color. I think that worked out pretty well. You could use purple, you could use blue, you could use just black if you just want a gray looking shade, but it's really just for the shadowing that we need the color. So I'm going to grab the purple colored pencil. And I'm going to try and do this dark. There's a few places that'll have a nice dark line. Right here is one of them. On this side of the triangle. Okay. And kind of toward the end. 
Now, if your lines are really dark, mine are really dark right now, um, you can run a light eraser over top of it to just kind of lighten them. I'm not going to do that because it'll make it harder for you to see what I'm doing, but on your end, if you wanna lighten your lines, you can. And then kind of around here, it'll be a little bit lighter. To give it a little bit of depth, we're gonna shade just light purple in like this. It's kind of like a extended triangle down here at the bottom. Is that showing up okay? Not awesome. Okay. Now we're gonna outline this this one that comes up this way. And there's gonna be a little darker outline on this side. Now each of the petals has like a line about halfway through it that follows the curvature of the leaf. And we're gonna use that to uh, figure out how we're shading. So on this one, I'm gonna shade to the right of that line about halfway through. And then I'm gonna leave a little white on the other side of that line, but shade along the edge of the petal up here. Well, I have something to show for this. Okay, so there's kind of a kind of fun. halfway point with it. Now this middle one, I'm gonna outline around here. This is the one that it would, it would be pointing, it would be curving away from us. So not at the very, very tip, but just slightly in, we're gonna do a little shading, it kind of, is that showing up okay? Yeah. Around here to kind of give the impression that it's bending backwards. And then lighten the shading up, going out a little bit. Again, we have this line in the middle that's gonna kind of define where our shading is. We'll put a little along the, set, the top and a little less along the bottom. But make sure you leave kind of some white area in the middle there. Are you outlining all of our petals in the purple? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can outline the petals in purple. But some spots are going to be darker. If it's, if like this petal is behind these other two petals, so there's going to be a little bit of a darker area right in here where it would be shadowed. Okay. And some serious back bending here right now. <laughs> That's okay. So again, we've got the line that kind of follows the curvature right in the middle, and we'll do some shading around that line, making sure to leave some white next to it so we can kind of see that, uh, that it's a petal. So we have the washing of the feet that's supposed to be a block there, but it's not good. Mm -hmm. We have the breaking of the bread and the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. Then we have the tomb, Jesus. Then we have the rising 
from the tomb. And then we have the resurrection, the hope. Easter. And Easter. Easter. Yeah. It, it's nice idea. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I won't go with you, Dave. It'll be too crowded. Next time. I'll just kind of move that in. Glare, it's hard for me to see the people right now. So, <laughs> okay, yeah, yep, she's back. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> can you hear me? Oh, can you, you have your sound off. I have. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. I had to get, I'm making all this bread and I had loaves of bread coming out of the oven. So sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so I should put my Do you have some down fruit. Now. Dave? I wonder yeah, if it's, it's mostly quiet. carbs we're having today, I see. <laughs> Jenny? Yes. What did you do with this, with that triangular leaf over on the side then? Uh, I this missed one. that. Yeah. Uh, this petal? Yeah. It just has some really light shading and kind of a, like a mountain range triangle along here. Okay. And you outlined that all in purple. Yeah, I outlined them all okay. in purple. Sometimes it's a lighter outline and sometimes it's darker just to vary it. We could probably also put a little of a darker shading right here to show the triangle bending. Okay. Mine's not that good. It's too big. I have barely, I don't have enough room for my stem. Oh, <laughs> that's okay though. Went a little crazy. <laughs> So I can't, if you want to give a thumbs up whenever you're ready to move on, take your time, but I can't see the thumbs up. So I'm going to look at you to tell me when it's time to go back. <laughs>
just read mm -hmm. these directions and go from there. What was that, Barb? Okay. Oh, yeah, I suppose. Well, I did stand last night, you know. Are you ready to move on, Barb? Does she look like she's ready? Oh, no, okay. I'm just gonna back it up a little bit again. <laughs> when it's backed up, it blocks the light. When I bring it forward, I can't see my screen at all. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next part, if that's okay. Um, we're going to work on the middle of the flower here. And again, we're going to use our yellow and our orange. And a little bit of green, probably the lighter green. So to begin with, you'll, you'll have about, eh, we'll use the orange for this. You'll have about four or five stamens that you're going to build. And they're just going to be kind of curvy with like a sesame seed at the end of them. <laughs> Does that show up okay? Okay. Now they should, they'll kind of go in different, um, different angles. You don't want them to all be parallel to each other or anything. So this one I'm gonna have kind of come up a little bit with the sesame seed at the end. I'd say five, maybe. Or if that's too many, then you can stop short. And then when you're finished with that, we're gonna use the yellow and just really fill in this area with yellow. up into the this one here, this one that points to the tomb. <laughs> Following that line up the middle a little bit that we've been using. And down here a little bit. And then we'll put at the very base, right up, up to next to this triangular one, we'll put a little bit of green as well. It's kind of hard to see the green, but it's there. What? Um, more kind of toward the, if you can see it a little better in this picture, I think, right in, in this area here of the triangle. That's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. They're all going to look different. And that's the main gist of our flower right there. And again, you can always go back and, and change things and add touch-ups as you go. Once we add some bright color to the background, it'll really help make it pop a lot better. So for the leaves, you're gonna want both of your greens. And use the darker green to kind of outline everything. So all the lines you drew in pencil, you're gonna outline with the darker green.
Now the things that are further in the back are gonna be more darker green. Things that are further in the front are hitting the light, we're gonna focus more on the lighter green. So I'm gonna start with what's in the back. This piece right here that connects to the flower is pretty much gonna be all dark. Oh, I forgot one of the leaves, that's okay. This one here is gonna be dark, but we're also gonna add a little light into it. So it'll be darker more toward the left side and maybe up to about the middle. And then we're gonna use the lighter color and fill in the rest with that. And again, you can shade it however you want going forward. This is just how I'm suggesting. So where it meets these other lines, where it's behind the other things, we'll add a little extra dark. This one, I'm gonna put a little, just a little dark on the bottom, but the rest of it's gonna be pretty light. In fact, I'm even maybe gonna add a little yellow to the light part just to make it stand out a little bit better. All right, now this little C section here is going to be much lighter. So actually I'm going to use the yellow in there and then I'm gonna darken it with the lighter green. Let's just fill it in with yellow. And then the lighter green, I'm gonna kind of almost make some lines that follow the curve here. And put a little bit toward the top here where it's shadowed. Now the top part of that leaf, the line that kind of goes in the middle I'm gonna use the dark green. And toward the top half of it, I'm using the dark green. Just a little bit on the bottom, lightly with the dark green. I don't wanna get go, going too fast. And then I'm gonna go over it with the lighter green. the whole thing.
Now coming down the stem, it'll be a little darker at the bottom and along the outside, uh, the right side. And then the rest will fill in with the light green. This guy down here, we're going to put the dark green where the folds happen. So we'll put a little dark green here, and we'll put dark green here where the folds of the leaf are happening, and a little across the top. And right in here. And then fill in the rest with the light green. And then we just have this guy here left. I'm going to do dark along the top and then the rest in light. Now, as you look at your piece, if there are any places that you think you want a little bit more pop, like we have right here, you can add yellow wherever you want. Any places where you need a little more shading, add some dark green. If you really want it dark, you can put a little black in there. Um, it's your picture, you can do whatever you want with it. And once you have finished that, let me know. Well, you can, if you can smooth it off, you can shade, shade in some purple to kind of soften it. Yeah. Yeah, the triangular one is a little extra triangly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can mute it. Right, yeah. Kelly's pointing out that you can kind of rub over some of it with your finger to soften some of the shading if you feel like some of your shading is a little too harsh. Or use your- I'm not good at flowers. <laughs> Nobody is. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's like something out of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Cause I, I got all, I went all cattywampus on my stem when I couldn't see it. it. So 
but it's like huge compared to the stem. I had to just put the stem in. So oh, that's totally, yeah. I mean, really, it's just, it's just a, a bigger version of the top part of, you know, I don't think you necessarily yeah. need all this down here. I think it looks great. Ooh, oh, very nice. nice. Very nice. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I love seeing people's artwork. <laughs> so once, yep, now we just have the background. And again, you can use whatever color you want. I chose to use kind of orange and yellow and a little bit of red because I thought that um, kind of made it pop and, and blended in a little with the resurrection color theme. Um, so you can just shade it in however you want. Don't be afraid to mix some colors if you want a little variation. And just, you know, I, I start out with it darker, closer to the flower and just kind of gradually lighten it as it goes out. So I'm going to use orange as my primary color. We'll have to take a group photo with everybody holding theirs up. Can we do that? Yeah, take a screenshot.
Yeah, yeah, we're about. Okay. That's all right. So if you're not finished, you can obviously finish it on your own. You know, once we're gone here, you can do whatever you want to your picture, add whatever details or shading or um, anything that appeals to you in the interest of respecting your time. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Show them, Kelly. Here. Is that beautiful? Yeah. It turned out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's the that's our picture. That's our three day journey all completed. Okay, so I'm gonna mute me. You're gonna mute me. I'm gonna mute me. Mute me. Mute me. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. That was really amazing. It's fun when you don't think you can draw and then you learn you can draw. <laughs> yes. The flower is great. Yeah, that was fun. Thank you. I still know that I can't draw, but it was fun. <laughs> Only with Jenny's help. Yes. I can't do this on my own. But we all need to help each other along the way, don't we? Yeah. And next time with wine. Oh, right. Oh. Well, we could have done that. It was a little early, but. It's a little right. early. You know, Connie, I knew I liked you. <laughs> oh, oh, Jenny's making a good point. It's never too early for wine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and it's still Lent. <laughs> Got it. I will put that on the note for the next retreat we do. We must have wine. As we um, bring our time together to a close, I have um, an, a closing prayer. But before I do that, I just, I want to say, I want to express words of gratitude for you being kind of guinea pigs for this new way of us doing retreats. And I'm, I know that um, Jenny and I were kind of nervous about this for all sorts of different reasons, but um, thank you for bearing with us through some of the technical things and through just this new world, you know, this new way of being together. I, I very, I'm just so grateful to be able to have spent this time with you. Um, it has enriched my Lent in ways that other things haven't. And so I want to just express that to you. I want to also invite you to set an intention. You know, Easter is a new beginning in our church for us as, as Christians. And this whole pandemic thing is kind of a new beginning for the world. And so I would like to invite us to pause for just a moment and bring an intention forth for our lives. You don't have to speak it out to the group, but if we just say it to ourselves, what will be our intention as we move forth from into this next Easter season? And I'm going to begin our closing prayer with a quote from the Gospel of John, verses uh, chapter 14, 3 and 4. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Certainly these last three days, we have been exploring that way. Jesus has taught us the way and has assured us that he will be with us every step along that way. And so with that, I'm going to share my screen again and invite us into um, saying Psalm 18, 118. Only if I can get my cursor to work. It'll be like a call and response. So I will speak part of the psalm and invite you to respond. Your steadfast love endures forever. 
and then I'll have a short prayer at the end and that will wrap up our time together. We give thanks to you, O oh beloved, for you are kind. Your steadfast, steadfast love endures forever. Let every nation proclaim your steadfast love endures forever. Let all the people cry, your steadfast, your steadfast love endures forever. Let those who reverence you sing, your steadfast love endures forever. Out of our distress, we called upon you. Your steadfast love endures forever. You answered, setting us on a new path. Your steadfast love endures forever. With you beside me, I do not fear. Your steadfast love endures forever. You live within us and answer our prayers. Your steadfast love endures forever. As I face the fears that well up from within, your steadfast love endures forever. It is better to abandon ourselves to the beloved. Your steadfast love endures forever. Than to trust in ourselves alone. Your steadfast love endures forever. It is better to surrender to love. Your steadfast love endures forever. Than to seek the riches of the world. Your steadfast love endures forever. You opened the gates of truth and justice. Your steadfast love endures forever. That we might enter through them. Your steadfast love endures forever. Praise be to you, O merciful one. Your steadfast love endures forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, O beloved, who answers our prayers and invites us to new life. The stone which the builders rejected has become the foundation of our lives. This, O eternal listener, is your work. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Remain ever by our side, O friend. Come, live in our hearts as loving companion presence. You are our beloved, and we will give thanks to you. You are our beloved, greatly we will praise you. We give thanks to you, O blessed one, for you are kind. Your steadfast love endures forever. Amen. And so brings our time together to a close. I wish you all um, a most holy and blessed Easter and Easter season and look forward to the day when we can be together again in person. Um, we are going to be offering um, some of these Zoom things, <laughs> right? We're doing a book club next week and we're gonna have some more things that we're gonna be coming out with. So um, watch your emails and we will let you know when that happens. And we'll also post this recording later today um, I forgot to start recording right away, so it's going to come in two pieces. Jenny and I record the first part. Um, but we'll get that done, we'll get it posted. And once all that's done, probably on Monday, so I won't do this tomorrow, but on Monday I'll send an email out with the links. And so if you'd like to, you know, or you could just go to our YouTube channel and pick it up in YouTube. Um, any other comments, thoughts? Words of wisdom. Let's go have some wine. Oh, we take a, I don't know how to, but Jenny's gonna, Jenny's gonna do a group picture. So if we all hold up our pictures, Jenny's gonna do a snapshot and we'll post it to Facebook. My giant flower will take over. Oh, we have to, Kelly, we have to see you. <laughs> Here, off to the side, I think works easiest. 
Barbara, yeah, go back further. Wait, Barbara, where'd you go? Barbara, you gotta stick your head off to the side. Lean the over. Side. <laughs> I know, I had to lead. No, you went there. <laughs> we want to see your face. Lean back further. Oh, you gotta see my face. Lean back. Oh, Barb's is really good. Yeah. Barb, you see good. your face? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Well, All right, I think I got it. All right, we got it. <laughs> if not, too bad. <laughs> we'll see how that works. All right, my friends. Thanks, Jenny. That was awesome. Thank you. Easter <laughs> blessings, everyone. Easter blessings Easter to, you. to you. Thank you. Hey, bud.